welcome to Zero Cool Gaming and today's game review. Today we're going to be talking about a game called Dark Star 1. Now Dark Star 1 is essentially a space simulator. Um, it's a basic one. It's easy to understand. It's easy to fly. It flies in truth a lot like a, um, a jet simulator would like uh, Ace Combat or something to that effect. Um, it's not a bad game. Um, it's not even a big game. Well, it is kind of big. And uh, that, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Because I'm saying it's a big game, but there's not a whole lot to it. It's very repetitive. Once you've met all the new or different species, everything from that point forward is just repeating. Um, one species or another as far as all the places that you go or, you know, maybe they'll change the, the color of a particular um, star system or maybe they'll add asteroids to a star system but it, it's very repetitive in that respect um, sometimes you get some cool uh, planetary pictures in the background um, they try to vary it up they do try to to make it varied and you know it kind of works I guess but yes you'll notice a lot of repeats um, you'll lot of, notice a lot of palette swaps and things like that to kind of change it up. As far as the, the gameplay itself, um, it's, it's kind of interesting. I enjoyed it. I mean, I played through it completely once. And I played through the first probably five, ten hours a few times. Um... And there's a reason why I stop where I do when I'm playing through it. The, the you know the other times that I played through it, it's because that's when it starts to get repetitive. But basically, how the game's set up is you have uh, a storyline, then you have side jobs, and then you have criminal activity. And criminal activity can be. Um, Everything from spying on people, listening to conversations, collecting um, items, uh, taking out security stations, um, or just hauling goods from one planetary system to another. Uh, some planetary systems uh, make particular things illegal, so those items if you bring them into that system can be sold for more than what you purchase for them that sort of thing the actual um, side jobs are basically like space trucking you're a space trucker you take item from place a to place b or you go get item in place a and take it to b or something to that effect most of them a few of them are helping out, you know, being an escort for particular um, convoys, things like that. Uh, some of them are also listening, uh, listening quests where you go out with your ship and you get close without them noticing and you listen in on their conversation, that sort of stuff. Or maybe you go out and you fix some satellites or maybe you go out and destroy some satellites, you know, that sort of thing. Um, there's lots of side quests. And basically with this game, from what I notice, in order to have enough money to purchase the stuff you need for your ship, minus weapons, because your weapons, you'll actually usually get the better weapons by um, completing uh, side missions. Like take out this pirate base or things of that effect. And the um, weapons that you win that way are usually better than the weapons that you can buy. Not by much, but 
just enough to make the game that much easier. But still, yes, just to have enough money to purchase the upgrades or whatever you need for your ship as you're going along. Um, yeah, you basically have to do every mission in every system as you play the game. And to me, that's actually good, good programming. Um, that way you're leveled up to where you're supposed to be. You have the weaponry that you need to move on to the next area. And you're not getting blocked or dying because you tried to fast forward through that. And this game truly won't let you fast forward. I mean, you can upgrade your ship and get a lot of upgrades. Um, and in actuality, it just makes the whole game harder. Even going back to your previous easier missions will actually be a little harder because you've gotten upgrades to your ship. Um, so, there's that aspect of the game too. So, really, when you start the game out, you just want to start knocking out all the quests on your side, you know, mission or side job whatever the bulletin board is that you get when you go to, into your uh, space stations. And you'll want to start knocking all of those out for each system that you go to. And then when you knocked all of those out and you completed all of those quests, then you move on to new system. That's kind of how you need to play the game. Otherwise, if you try to skip, you know, uh, the ones that you can, which will be about a third of them as you're going through, you'll get to about nine, ten hours and you won't be able to complete any of the missions in that star system because you don't have the right weaponry, you haven't upgraded your ship enough, all of these things will play a role. Um, so yeah, it, it is in actuality good. Um, programming and good level design to do it that way uh, it's just that the later half of the game is just a repeat of that over and over and over again first time through it's, it's enjoyable enough um, there's not much of a storyline it's pretty basic um, and you do get like a helper along the way But in truth, the side quest storylines are sometimes more interesting than the, the main quest story. Like I said, it's pretty basic. There's not much to it. But like I, also, there, like I said, there is enough there to keep you interested if you've never played it before and you enjoy space simulators. Th this isn't a bad one. And there's, in truth, there's not a lot of these type of games to choose from either. And of these type of games that are out there, this is one of the better ones, truly. Um, are there better ones than this? Sure. Um, but this one isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. And for me, as far as flight simulator games go, the only ones that I have are space flight simulators. Um, I'm not really into jet simulators or you know helicopter flying or any of that type of stuff. Um, I do like like futuristic cars and race cars, sure. Um, but I don't really like any other sport games like football or basketball or hockey or you know any of that other stuff that goes along with sports games. I'm not really into any of that either. So I do have a particular genre in that respect that I enjoy. And it's not that I've never played like a, a Madden football game. I have actually. I own like three of them. But I didn't play them necessarily because I wanted to play the game. Um, I literally bought them, you know, about 10 years apart from each other just to see how the graphics were improving for those type of games and to see how the interface was improving or not improving or changing or that sort of stuff. I was more interested in the mechanics behind it 
at a academic level than playing the game to any real sense because I've never completed any of them. Um, and a couple of them I don't think I've ever even gotten past like the first couple of games. <laughs> it's just not something that I enjoy. Um, kind of like RTS games truly. I, I don't really like RTS games either. But I have played a few of them and I've actually even completed a couple RTS games. Um, and a real-time strategy to me, I mean, that could mean a lot of things. But to me, that's like a, um, a war strategy game, where you're not, like, commanding just a, a simple squad, because that's more like an RPG. But where you're, like, trying to command an army. Um, no, that doesn't really thrill me. Those type of games don't thrill me. So, what's my review of Dark Star 1? It's not a bad space simulator. It's got decent gameplay. It is kind of repetitive. There is a lot of palette swapping. There's not a lot of variety in that respect to the game itself. But for being a space simulator, which there aren't a lot of, it is actually one of the better ones. So, a mid rating, I guess. <laughs> It's a mediocre game. It's not bad to play. It's actually easy to control, easy to play. And if you, like I said, if you actually just go through and play the game and do all the little side missions that you have available, you'll be at the right level with the right weaponry to complete the entire game. So, in truth, relatively easy. And that's my review of Dark Star 1. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.